Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the popliteal fossa. To begin with, the popliteal fossa is a diamond shaped depression lying behind the knee joint, the lower part of the femur and the upper part of the tibia, right here and right here. Now this is a posterior superficial view of the right lower limb. Let us learn about the boundaries of the popliteal fossa. Now this is the medial aspect that is towards the midline of the body and this is the lateral aspect that is away from the midline of the body. Now supralaterally that is superiorly and laterally the popliteal fossa is bounded by the biceps femoris muscle that you see right here. Supromedially that is superiorly and medially the popliteal fossa is bounded by the semimembranosus muscle, semitendinosus, gracilis, the sartorius and the adductor magnus muscle. Now infralaterally that is inferiorly and laterally it is bounded by the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle and inframedially it is bounded by the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. Now let us look at the roof of the popliteal fossa through this diagram. The roof of the fossa is formed by the deep fascia or the popliteal fascia. The superficial fascia over the roof contains the small saphenous vein that you can see right here and the cutaneous nerves. Now the three cutaneous nerves are the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh as you can see right here, the peroneal or the sural communicating nerve and the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Here you can see the posterior division of the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Next, let us look at the floor of the popliteal fossa through this diagram. The floor of the popliteal fossa is formed from above downwards by the popliteal surface of the femur that you see right here, the capsule of the knee joint shown in green color along with the oblique popliteal ligament and finally the strong popliteal fascia covering the popliteus muscle right here. Now, concising the important points under the introduction to the popliteal fossa, the popliteal fossa is a diamond shaped depression lying behind the knee joint, the lower part of the femur and the upper part of the tibia. Looking at the boundaries, supralaterally it is bounded by the biceps femoris muscle, supramedially by the semitendinosus and semimembranosus, supplemented by the gracilis, sartorius and adductor magnus. Infralaterally, it is bounded by the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, supplemented by the plantaris muscle. Inframedially, it is bounded by the medial head of the gastrocnemius. Now looking at the roof of the fossa, it is formed by the deep fascia or the popliteal fascia. The superficial fascia over the roof contains the small saphenous vein and cutaneous nerves and the three cutaneous nerves, namely the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh and the peroneal or the sural communicating nerve. The floor of the popliteal fossa is formed from above downwards by the popliteal surface of the femur, the capsule of the knee joint and the oblique popliteal ligament and the strong popliteal fascia covering the popliteus muscle. Now let us look at the contents of the popliteal fossa. So what can be the major contents? They can be arteries, veins, nerves, fat and lymph nodes. So let us look at each of them in detail. First, there is the popliteal artery that you see in red along with its branches. Then there is the popliteal vein in blue, the tibial nerve, the common peroneal nerve that you see right here, the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh that cannot be seen in this diagram, the genicular branch of obturator nerve, the popliteal lymph nodes and finally fat. The popliteal vessels and the tibial nerve cross the fossa vertically and are arranged one over the other. The tibial nerve in yellow is the most superficial. The popliteal vein in blue lies deep or anterior to the tibial nerve. The popliteal artery is the deepest of them all. Now the artery is crossed posteriorly by the vein and the nerve. Now the relative Position of these structures is as follows. In the upper part, from medial to lateral side, we can see the artery, the vein and the nerve. 
So in relation to the position of the femur, the tibia and the fibula, you can see here that this is the medial side that is towards the midline of the body and this is the lateral side that is away from the midline of the body. So in the upper part, we have the artery, vein and nerve from the medial to the lateral side. In the middle part, from behind to forwards, there is the nerve, the vein and the artery. Similarly, in the lower part, from medial to lateral side, there is the nerve, the vein and the artery. Now, the common peroneal nerve that you see right here crosses the fossa obliquely from the superior angle to the lateral angle along the medial border of the biceps femoris muscle. Concising the important points under the contents of the popliteal fossa, we have the popliteal artery and its branches, the popliteal vein and its tributaries, tibial nerve and its branches, the common peroneal nerve and its branches, the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, genicular branch of obturator nerve, the popliteal lymph nodes and fat. The popliteal vessels and tibial nerve cross the fossa vertically and are arranged one over the other. The tibial nerve is most superficial. Popliteal vein lies deep or anterior to tibial nerve. The popliteal artery is deepest of all. The artery is crossed posteriorly by the vein and by the nerve. The related position of these three structures is as follows. In the upper part, from medial to lateral side, there is the artery, vein and nerve. In the middle part, from behind to forwards, there is nerve, vein and artery. And the lower part, from medial to lateral side, there is the nerve, vein and artery. The common peroneal nerve crosses the fossa obliquely from the superior angle to the lateral angle along the medial border of the biceps femoris muscle. Next, let's learn about the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery is a continuation of the femoral artery. It begins at the opening in the adductor magnus or hiatus magnus that you see right here. That is at the junction of the middle one third of the thigh with the lower one third of the thigh. It runs downwards and slightly laterally that is away from the midline of the body. It runs laterally to reach the lower border of the popliteus muscle right here. Here is the popliteus muscle and here is its lower border. So it reaches till here and then it terminates at the lower border of the popliteus by dividing into anterior tibial artery and posterior tibial arteries. Now let's look at the relations of the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery is the deepest structure in the popliteal fossa as we had learned earlier. Anterior or deep to the artery from above downwards, there is the popliteal surface of the femur, the back of the knee joint and the fascia covering the popliteus muscle. The posteriorly or superficially, the popliteal artery is related to the tibial nerve. Laterally, that is away from the body, it is related to the biceps femoris muscle and the lateral condyle of the femur in the upper part and plantaris muscle as well as the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle in the lower part. To give you a more clear picture of the lateral relations of the popliteal artery, you can see the popliteal artery right here and laterally you can see the biceps femoris muscle right here and the lateral condyle of the femur in the upper part, the plantaris muscle right here and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle in the lower part. Now medially, the popliteal artery is related to the semimembranosus muscle and the medial condyle of the femur in the upper part and the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle in the lower part. Looking at the medial relations of the popliteal artery more clearly in this diagram, you can see the semimembranosus muscle right here in the upper part and the medial head of the gastrocnemius in the lower part. Now before we learn about the branches of the popliteal artery, let's concise the important points under the introduction and relations of the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery is a continuation of the femoral artery. It begins at the opening in the adductor magnus or hiatus magnus that is at the junction of the middle one-third with the lower one-third of the thigh. 
It runs downwards and slight laterally to reach the lower border of the popliteus. It terminates at the lower border of the popliteus by dividing into anterior and posterior tibial arteries. Looking at the relations, the popliteal artery is the deepest structure in the popliteal fossa. Anterior or deep to the artery, from above downwards, there are the popliteal surface of the femur, the back of the knee joint, the fascia covering the popliteus muscle. Posterior or superficially, it is related to the tibial nerve. Laterally, it is related to the biceps femoris and the lateral condyle of the femur in the upper part, the plantaris muscle and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius in the lower part. Medially, it is related to the semimembranosus and the medial condyle of the femur in the upper part and the medial head of the gastrocnemius in the lower part. Now, let's learn about the branches of the popliteal artery. Several muscular branches are given off from the popliteal artery. The upper two or three muscular branches supply the adductor magnus muscle and the hamstrings. The lower branches supply gastrocnemius, soleus and plantaris muscles. Now the cutaneous branches arise directly from the popliteal artery or indirectly from its muscular branches. Now let's look at the genicular branches of the popliteal artery. The genicular branches are five in number. Two superior genicular branches, one middle genicular branch and two inferior genicular branches. Now looking at each of these genicular branches in detail. Firstly, looking at the superior medial genicular artery and the superior lateral genicular artery. They wind around the corresponding sides of the femur and pass deep to the hamstring muscles. Looking at the middle genicular artery right here, it pierces the oblique popliteal ligament of the knee and supplies the cruciate ligaments and synovial membrane of the knee joint. Looking at the medial and lateral inferior genicular arteries, they wind around the corresponding tibial condyles and pass to the collateral ligaments of the knee. Now, all these arteries reach in front of the knee and take part in forming the anastomosis around the knee joint. Finally, looking at the clinical anatomy of the popliteal artery, the blood pressure in the lower limb is recorded from the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery is more prone to aneurysm than many other arteries in the body. Concising the important points under the branches of the popliteal artery, several large muscular branches are given off. The upper two or three muscular branches supply the adductor magnus and hamstrings and terminate by anastomosing with the fourth perforating artery. The lower muscular branches supply the gastrocnemius muscle, the soleus and the plantar. Cutaneous branches rise directly from the popliteal artery or indirectly from its muscular branches. The genicular branches are five in number, that is two superior, one inferior and one middle. The middle genicular artery pierces the oblique popliteal ligament of the knee and supplies the cruciate ligaments and the synovial membrane of the knee joint. The medial and lateral superior genicular arteries wind around the corresponding sides of the femur and pass deep into the hamstrings. The medial and lateral inferior genicular arteries wind around the corresponding tibial condyles and pass to the collateral ligaments of the knee. All these arteries reach the front of the knee and take part in forming the anastomosis around the knee joint. Looking at the clinical anatomy of the popliteal artery, the blood pressure in the lower limb is recorded from the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery is more prone to aneurysm than many other arteries in the body. Now let's learn about the popliteal vein. It begins at the lower border of the popliteus muscle. It is medial to the popliteal artery in the lower part of the fossa, as you can see right here. It is posterior to the artery in the middle and posterolateral to the artery in the upper part of the fossa. The popliteal vein receives the small saphenous vein and the corresponding veins of the branches of the popliteal artery. Concising the important points under the popliteal vein, it begins at the lower border of the popliteus by the union of the veins accompanying the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. It is medial to the popliteal artery in the lower part of the fossa, posterior to the artery in the middle, posterolateral to it in the upper part of the fossa. The popliteal vein receives the small saphenous vein 
and the veins corresponding to the branches of the popliteal artery. Now let's learn about the tibial nerve in the popliteal fossa. This is the larger terminal branch of the sciatic nerve. It lies superficial or posterior to the popliteal vessels as we had seen earlier. It extends from the superior angle to the inferior angle of the popliteal fossa, crossing the popliteal vessels from the lateral to the medial side. Now let's look at the branches of the tibial nerve. We have three genicular or articular branches, one cutaneous nerve and a few muscular branches. Now let's look at each of it in detail. Firstly, we look at the three genicular or articular branches that arise in the upper part of the popliteal fossa. First, there is the superior medial genicular nerve that you see right here. It lies above the medial condyle of the femur, deep to the muscles. Secondly, there is the middle genicular nerve right here. It pierces the posterior part of the capsule of the knee joint to supply the structures in the intercondylar notch of the femur. Third, we have the inferior medial genicular nerve right here. It lies along the upper border of the popliteus muscle. Next, we have the cutaneous nerve, which is also called the sural nerve that you see right here. This is the sural nerve, which originates in the middle of the popliteal fossa and leaves at the inferior angle. It supplies the skin of the lower half of the back of the leg and whole of the lateral border of the foot till the tip of the toe. Finally, the muscular branches arise in the distal part of the fossa for the lateral and medial heads of the gastrocnemius. Here you can see the branch for the medial head of the gastrocnemius and here for the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. Then we have a branch for the soleus muscle one for the plantaris muscle and one for the popliteus muscle. The medial head of the gastrocnemius, lateral head of the gastrocnemius, one for the plantaris, soleus and popliteus muscle. Looking at the clinical anatomy of the tibial nerve, damage to the tibial nerve causes motor and sensory loss. Motor loss include superficial and deep muscles of the calf and the intrinsic muscles of the sole. And sensory loss includes loss of sensation on the whole of the sole of the foot, the plantar aspect of the digits and nail beds on the dorsum of the foot. Concising the important points under the tibial nerve in the popliteal fossa, its root value is the ventral divisions of ventral rami of L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3. This is the larger terminal branch of the sciatic nerve. It lies superficial or posterior to the popliteal vessels. It extends from the superior angle to the inferior angle of the popliteal fossa, crossing the popliteal vessels from lateral to medial side. Under the branches, we learn that there are three genicular or articular branches, a cutaneous nerve and muscular branches. So under the three genicular or articular branches arise in the upper part of the fossa. There is a superior med medial genicular nerve that lies above the medial condyle of the femur, deep to the muscles. Middle genicular nerve pierces the posterior part of the capsule of the knee joint to supply the structures in the intercondylar notch of the femur. The inferior middle genicular nerve, medial genicular nerve, lies along the upper border of the popliteus. Looking at the cutaneous nerve, it is also called the sural nerve, which originates in the middle of the fossa and leaves it at the inferior angle. It supplies the skin of the lower half of the back of the leg and whole of the lateral border of the foot till the tip of the toe. The muscular branches arise in the distal part of the fossa for the lateral and medial heads of the gastrocnemius, the soleus, plantaris muscle and the popliteus muscle. Looking at the clinical anatomy, damage to the tibial nerve causes motor and sensory loss. Motor loss includes that of superficial and deep muscles of the calf and intrinsic muscles of the sole. Sensory loss includes loss of sensation on whole of the sole of the foot, the plantar aspect of the digits and nail beds on the dorsum of the foot. Now let's learn about the common peroneal nerve that you see right here. This is the smaller terminal branch of the sciatic nerve. It extends from the superior angle of the fossa to the lateral angle along the medial border of the biceps femoris muscle. Continuing downwards and forwards, it winds around the posterolateral aspect of the neck of the fibula right here and pierces the peroneus longus muscle and divides into superficial and deep peroneal nerves. Now let's look at the branches of the common peroneal nerve. 
there are cutaneous branches and articular branches. First, let's look at the cutaneous branches. Cutaneous branches are two in number. First is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf right here. Second is the sural communicating nerve right here. So the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf descends to supply the skin of the upper two thirds of the lateral side of the leg. The sural communicating nerve right here arises in the upper part of the popliteal fossa. Looking at the articular branches, they are three in number. The superior lateral genicular nerve, the inferior lateral genicular nerve and the recurrent genicular nerve. The superior lateral genicular nerve accompanies with the superior lateral genicular artery and lies above the lateral condyle of the femur. The inferior lateral genicular nerve also runs with the artery of the same name, that is the inferior lateral genicular artery and lies to the lateral aspect of the knee joint above the head of the femur, as you can see right here. The recurrent genicular nerve arises where the common peroneal nerve divides into superficial and deep peroneal nerves. Concising the important points under the common peroneal nerve, root value is the dorsal divisions of the ventral rami of L4, L5, S1 and S2. So the root value is L4, L5, S1 and S2. Looking at the course, this is a smaller terminal branch of the sciatic nerve. It extends from the superior angle of the fossa to the lateral angle along the medial border of the biceps femoris. Continuing downwards and forwards, it winds round the posterolateral aspect of the neck of the fibula, pierces the peroneus longus muscle and divides into superficial and deep peroneal nerves. Looking at the branches, there are the cutaneous branches which are two, the lateral cutaneous nerve and the sural communicating nerve. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf descends to supply the skin of the upper two-thirds of the lateral side of the leg. The sural communicating nerve arises in the upper part of the fossa. The articular branches include three. The superior lateral genicular nerve accompanies the artery of the same name and lies above the lateral femoral condyle. The inferior lateral genicular nerve also runs with the artery of the same name to the lateral aspect of the knee joint above the head of the fibula. The recurrent genicular nerve arises where the common peroneal nerve divides into superficial and deep peroneal nerves. Now let's look at the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. It is a content of the upper half of the popliteal fossa. It pierces the deep fascia about the middle of the fossa and supplies the skin up to the middle of the back of the leg. Concising the important points under the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, it is a content of the upper half of the popliteal fossa. It pierces the deep fascia about the middle of the fossa and supplies the skin up to the middle of the back of the leg. So let's look at the genicular branch of the obturator nerve. This is the anterior aspect. This is the posterior aspect. So here is the posterior branch of the obturator nerve. The, the genicular branch of the obturator nerve is the continuation of the posterior division of the obturator nerve. It runs on the posterior surface of the popliteal artery, pierces the oblique popliteal ligament and supplies the capsule of the knee joint. Concising the important points under the genicular branch of the obturator nerve, it is a continuation of the posterior division of the obturator nerve. It runs on the posterior surface of the popliteal artery, pierces the oblique popliteal ligament and supplies the capsule of the knee joint. The popliteal lymph nodes lie deep to the deep fascia, near the termination of the small saphenous vein. They receive efferents from the lateral part of the sole, both superficial and deep parts of the back of the leg and the knee joint. Finally, looking at the clinical anatomy of the popliteal fossa, the common peroneal nerve is relatively unprotected. It may get entrapped between the attachments of the peroneus longus to the head and shaft of the fibula. Patient presents foot drop which is usually painless. And finally, there is weakness of dorsiflexion of the ankle and the eversion of the foot. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of popliteal fossa as well as notes of other topics of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, psychology, pathology and pharmacology, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.